Hey everybody, my name is JBR, and one of my favorite game franchises is Fire Emblem. I've sunk hundreds of hours into playing individual wow. games, and more hours than I'm willing to admit playing them all. But all those playing hours raised a question in my head. Would it be possible to beat every single game in less than 24 hours? Well, you might want to stick around to the end of this video to find your answer. You may be in for a bit of a surprise like I was. Before we continue, I must say that my initial theory was that it was impossible to beat every game in less than 24 hours. But, a lot of these games are Japanese exclusive and can't be played in the West in English without emulation. So I thought perhaps we could see if we could beat all the English games in less than a day. If so, then maybe we could see if we could beat all the Japanese games in under 24 hours. Sound plausible? Well, let's check it out. The first step in finding an answer is determining where and how we can find the data to prove whether or not we can beat every game in the time provided. Where we can find data that can give us fast, expert level play. Well, that's quite obvious really, speedrun.com. This website hosts a collection of leaderboards for recorded speedruns, meaning we can get clear data with legitimate proof that it's real because there are moderators that run a deep check for us. So we can save a ton of time by not having to play the games ourselves. So to start, we have Fire Emblem 7 The Blazing Sword, the first game released in the west in 2003. This game features 3 lords and 3 different story routes. For the sake of our experiment, we're going to see if we could beat it using Lin Mode to Elwood Mode. We'll try the two easiest and fastest difficulties. We might be able to save some time when we start with just Elwood mode, but that would mean we're skipping about the first 10 chapters. Also, there's no recorded speedrun here for an Elwood only run. So we're going with the any percent world record of 1 hour, 11 minutes, and 31 seconds by TR141. The next game would be Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, also on the Game Boy Advance. The game is very similar to FE7 in gameplay in that you can use a super powered paladin to breeze through the game super fast. However, it differs with the route split in the middle of the game. At the end of chapter 8, you can choose to go with either Erika or Ephraim. This route split lasts 6 individual chapters that join back together for the remaining 7. So the question for these route split games are do we have to play every chapter? And what routes are the fastest? To answer the first question, I'm going to say no. The challenge is to finish all the games as soon as possible, not play all the chapters. A lot of Fire Emblem games have optional maps known as guidance chapters, and since we're trying to beat all the games as fast as possible, it only makes sense to skip these chapters. The same applies for route splits. If there's a way to finish the game faster, then of course we're going to play the routes that are the fastest. So what route is faster in the Sacred Stones? I always thought Ephraim's route was harder, but in this case it's faster by about 3 minutes. 1 hour and 3 minutes 13 seconds compared to 1 hour 6 minutes and 15 in Erika's. Well I was hoping for a better time skip than 3 minutes, but hey I'll take what I can get. Next is Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. This game is infamous for how slow it can be, so I'm expecting the time on this one to jump. And unfortunately I would be correct. We recorded times of about 1 hour 10 minutes for the previous two, but then Path of Radiance jumps up to 1 hour 59 minutes and 26 seconds. Yikes, almost 2 hours. But we can save about 6 minutes if we play on the Japanese version at 1 hour 53 minutes and 4 seconds, so we're going with that. I know the point is to have us play all the English games, but this will help us later for our calculations when we start including the Japanese games, plus it's only 6 minutes. Oh, by the way, the two previous games I just mentioned were ran by Kirby Master. They are an absolute legend in the Fire Emblem speedrunning community and almost all these world records are held by them. To save a bit of time from mentioning Kirby Master every time, I'm going to have a little Kirby in the bottom right corner to imply that this world record is held by Kirby Master. But seriously, after this video check them out to see how it's possible to beat these long turn based games in so little time. It's honestly incredible to watch. Moving on to Radiant Dawn, this game is a bit longer than Path of Radiance, but they added a feature that lets you skip map combat animations. Thank you, God. You can also use transfer bonuses to add a bit of extra stat to the units from the previous game. Transfer bonuses occur when you get a character in Path of Radiance to cap a stat, so it will add plus 2 to the base stats in Radiant Dawn, the sequel. But even with transfer bonuses, this game still clocks in at a massive 2 hours, 33 minutes, and 19 seconds on easy mode with transfers. With 4 of the 9 games down, we're at 6 hours, 41 minutes, and 7 seconds. We're on pace to be able to beat all the English games in under 24 hours, but it's looking like my initial theory of adding the 7 Japanese games will send us over the 24 hour goal. Well, that's what I thought, but then Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon served up a huge surprise. This game can be beaten ridiculously fast, as in 16 minutes, 33 seconds fast. Wow, just wow. You could beat all of Shadow Dragon on your 30 minute lunch break and still have time for lunch. That is just ridiculous. We went from Radiant Dawn at 2 hours 33 minutes to 16 minutes? Our goal is looking more and more possible at this rate. 
The couple of reasons why this game is so short compared to the previous game is because you have infinite warp range on staffs and this was the first game that allowed you to skip enemy phases. Enemy phases were easily the longest part of the speedruns in the previous game so the next couple of games with this feature are going to be much faster. The next game is the 13th installment in the series, Fire Emblem Awakening. We're going from FE11 to FE13 because the game Fire Emblem New Mystery of the Emblem is Japanese exclusive. Like I said, we'll talk about the Japanese games in due time, hold your horse units. Moving on, Fire Emblem Awakening can also skip enemy phases, so it clocks in at 32 minutes 53 seconds by a run by Yukiya, a Japanese player. This run is a lot of fun to watch. I can't speak Japanese, but the live commentary at the end is great. You can hear the excitement and the stress and then finally the insane happiness from the runner after getting two back-to-back 40% -back crits to finish off the final boss and gain the world record. The next game, or three games, is Fire Emblem Conquest, Birthright, and Revelations. These are all part of Fire Emblem Fates and are technically three separate games, but there is a huge loophole on this one. We might spend a lot of money on this one, but Fire Emblem Fates Special Edition has all three games put into one. So by beating one route and seeing the credits, we've technically beaten the game. The fastest route is easily Birthright at 35 minutes and 49 seconds, which is about 8 minutes faster than Conquest and Revelations. Our last 3DS game is Fire Emblem Shadows of Alinta a remake of the second game in the series, clocking in at 1 hour 19 minutes 32 seconds with a run by Bane, a Japanese player. This puts us at a total of 9 hours 25 minutes and 54 seconds with one last English game to play, that being Fire Emblem Three Houses. This game has four different story routes, so just like with Sacred Stones, we need to find out which route is the fastest. Lucky for us, at the expense of Edelgard fans, Crimson Flower is quite short and unfinished compared to the others. Crimson Flower has 18 chapters compared to 21 chapters in Silver Snow and 22 in each Azure Mood and Verdant Wind. The Crimson Flower run clocks in at 1 hour 15 minutes but if we play on New Game Plus we can save about 13 minutes with the run by Claris at 1 hour 2 minutes and 27 seconds. So our total time for the English games is 10 hours 28 minutes and 21 seconds. Wow, before I was estimating that just the English games would be a little under 24 hours, but it would be kind of close. But Shadow Dragon, Fire Emblem Awakening, and Fates helped our time go down a lot with each game being under an hour. So to answer the question, yes, it is possible to beat all the English games in one day. Actually, less than half a day. I'm honestly shocked it's only 11 hours rounding up. And since we have so much time, I was still curious if we could beat every game in 24 hours. So I got busy doing the calculations of the Japanese games, and that's when I saw something that blew my freaking mind. The first Fire Emblem game ever released, known as Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, has an incredible world record of 4 minutes 54 seconds. Yes, you can beat a Fire Emblem game in less than 5 minutes. You can beat Fire Emblem 1 while going on a bathroom break, that's insane. I thought Shadow Dragon being beaten in 16 minutes and the 3DS games in about 30 was insane, but 5 minutes? Oh my god. Honestly, if this is this short, I'll have to stream it myself attempting to speedrun this game sometime. That's insane. Major props to Leloio on this sub 5 minute run. Well, that run of FE1 certainly helps our case out a lot. Hopefully the other Japanese games will be short like that one. Genealogy of the Holy Wars, and I knew this game was going to take quite a while. It's really two games put into one, so to speak, and the maps are extremely big. Another thing that's big is the time of the speedrun. The world record is 4 hours 12 minutes and 59 seconds. Still an impressive run by Mute Myosu, but yikes, that takes us from 10 hours 33 minutes to 14 hours 46 minutes. We only have about 7 hours to beat the remaining games, and Fire Emblem 3 is isn't gonna help us. Also in case you're wondering, we're gonna skip Fire Emblem Guided for now, but we'll come back to it later. I just thought I should mention it now before you ask why it's missing. Fire Emblem 3 is a remake and a new game at the same time. See, it has two books. Book 1 is a remake of the first game and Book 2 is a sequel. I'm not sure whether to count just the sequel or both, but I'm gonna add both for now. The run of Book 1 is 1 hour 26 minutes and 22 seconds, but Book 2 is 2 hours 21 minutes and 40 seconds. Even if we only count Book 2, this is not looking good for us. With both books are at 18 hours, 34 minutes, and 16 seconds. I'm gonna include both books for now, but if we go over 24 hours, we can remove it. Sound fair? Okay. Next is Fire Emblem Thracia 776. Hey, I said it right in this video. This game is much shorter than the last two, thank god, but man, it's still pretty long. Magu1230 holds the world record of 1 hour, 49 minutes, and 18 seconds, and with Thracia, we've officially gone over the 20 hour mark. With less than 4 hours remaining, we're nearing the end, but we still have 3 games left. 
Farm Emblem The Binding Blade is next, and thanks to the abundance of warp staff uses and RNG manipulation in this game, the world record is 1 hour, 5 minutes, and 53 seconds. Our second to last game is jumping all the way from the 6th game to the 12th game, Fire Emblem New Mystery of the Emblem. This is a remake of FE3, but it's just a sequel without Book 1. That's a relief. It is of course, like many others, a world record by Kirby Master at 41 minutes, 3 seconds, and with that read a total of 22 hours, 10 minutes, and 30 seconds. Okay, now on to the behemoth that is Fire Emblem Gaiden. I know it's sort of weird that we skipped it before, but the reason for that is there's not a category for it on speedrun.com. I'm not sure why that is, but this means we have to do some digging. I tried digging around, but couldn't find anything definitive. I could find clips of people speedrunning certain chapters and segments, but I couldn't find anything that goes from start to finish. So I asked around in some Fire Emblem Discord servers and waited, and I didn't learn much. It's not anyone's fault, I guess it really is just that hard to find Fire Emblem Guide in speedruns. Probably because the game is so old and Shadows of Valenti is such a faithful remake, but geez, all I can say is that it needs to be less than 1 hour, 49 minutes, and 30 seconds, which I think is plenty of time to finish it, but I can't say for certain. Kind of a non-specific way to end things, I mean we got so close to a definitive answer, but I'm just gonna go ahead and declare that a guide and speed run would probably take less time than 1 hour, 49 minutes, and if it does go over, we can always take out book 1 from FE3. If anyone in the comments can link a speed run done in less than that time, we can make it official, but even without official documentation, I think we can safely conclude that yes you can beat every single farm limb game in less than 24 hours honestly i'm quite surprised sure it's certainly not easy it can only leave you around like 30 minutes for human errors as well as eating using the bathroom etc but we have learned today that it is possible to beat every single farm limb game in one day Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoy videos like this, do me a huge favor and hit subscribe. Doing so and hitting the bell will let you get notified when I upload new videos like this and it tells me to keep making them. If you liked the video, it would mean a lot if you could hit the like button and post a comment with your reaction down below. I'm excited to see some of your reaction to some of these things, such as Final the one being beaten in under 5 minutes. And lastly, share out this video with anyone you think would enjoy it and let me know down in the comments their reactions. <laughs> anyway, you know me, JBR, and I'm off to try and beat every single Final game in one one day, might take a couple years with my luck.